What's going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? Welcome to another episode of On The Bench with Pete. This is the uh, series that you put on in the background whilst you build or paint your models to help you get through those more slightly laborious tasks perhaps. Um, or of course you can put this on whilst you're driving your car or, or eating your breakfast, that's fine as well. And I'll just talk about random stuff um, as we get lots of hobby stuff done. So. Get your paints ready and your models and your brushes and um, yeah let's get down to business. Well today I'm continuing my Necromunda journey. Now a couple of these guys have got um, a little bit of Balthazar gold on but I've got to do the same for all of my guys. So I've got one, two, three, four guys with Balthazar gold. Um, and I'm going to need to do some more for, for the rest of them. So I've got another six to do here. I'll at least get some down. So give my little pop to mix it up in. Just give it a good shake. And I'm going to put some retardo with it. Some retardo, some fluid, maybe just a drop. Right. Okay. Up of this in here, shall we? Don't want too much because even even with the retardo, it dries. Um, I can't find my wet palette for the moment. I will find it. Oh, it's around somewhere. Um, but I'm okay with that. Right, drying retardo. Let's put a couple of drops of that in. And that's going to help fill it down as well. And some fluid. And what I'll do, I'll just dip the tip of my brush into my water pot and then use it to mix it up. And then that should give me um, a nice consistency, one I, one I like. So, got lots to talk about. Doesn't mean I'm not going to have big gaps of silence, so I'll try, I'll try and minimise that. But, yeah, uh, yesterday at the time of recording I went for an interview with Games Workshop, so I thought I'd tell you about that as part of uh, what I talk about here. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, I've done a bit of gold on him as well, so let's fill that in a bit, although there's a little bit of a chip there. That's okay, I'll just... Uh... Yeah, so I went, to, I went to Exeter. That's about a 50 minute drive for, for me here. It's, it took me about 50 minutes to get there. It's about 40 minutes by train. And I went for a job interview. Because, uh, yeah, I've been looking for a job. And, um... This one at Games Workshop came up, so, so uh, yeah, I got an interview, which is great. So even if I don't get any further, that I'm happy with that. You know what I mean? Uh, but that's looking good. So I put on one of my suits, and I went up there. Didn't really know what to expect in a Games Workshop interview. But it was okay. My interview is at 12. Now the store doesn't actually open until 12, but um, they were interviewing before that. There was there was someone in before me. <coughs> and um, talking to the guy, it sounds like, you know, it's been, there was a couple in before me. The, I say guy, he was only a youngster in the retail store. He's only been there since uh, like Christmas time. But um, I, I had to wait for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, quarter of an hour max. I think it was about 10 minutes, probably closer to the truth. So they were running a bit behind time, see, which is okay. Uh, it's better than being late for your interview, isn't it? Which I wasn't anyway, I was early, but uh, I can think of worse places to be waiting, can't you? So I can look at all these models. And, so, 
I got taken in to like the back room, like the storeroom, the stock room, as it were. And um, there was two two guys. There was a retail um, recruitment guy and the store manager. So I mean, I, by the way, I can talk about this because. Uh, I asked him about YouTube and stuff during my interview. You know, what, what's the deal with YouTube? Um, and the reason I ask that is because I don't see many Games Workshop staff doing YouTube. So I thought I, I would put it out there. And um, I asked him. I've got some things on his uh, chest plate here. I'll do that. Got like a skull on there. Which will do. That's fine. Yeah, and anyway, so I made sure that it was okay to talk about this stuff. And it was okay to, you know keep making videos and stuff even you know once you got the job and that so I said you know is there a policy in place and there isn't really I was just told just to be aware when you do this if you're working for Games Workshop and you make a video for instance on YouTube you represent Games Workshop so that's kind of their way of saying be wary of what you post of course, but uh, it is fair enough. Um, he was called Nigel, uh, the recruitment guy. Uh, the manager was Neil. Now, uh, It lasted about rough, nearly an hour, just under, I suppose. Which is, I suppose, I mean, I haven't had an interview in about 15 years, but from what I can remember, that sounds about right. If it's a lot quicker than that, then, you know, you're really not in with much of a chance if it goes on. Then I think you're still in the running, so to speak. kind of breaks up the silver on the back to do this Balthazar gold. I mean it's more, it's all about theatrics, painting golds and bronzes, I mean he's going to run around with gold or bronze on, on them really. To my mind that doesn't, that wouldn't make much sense but it looks good. I think gold's good on him. No, he's the first one with one of these type of guns. So what am I gonna do with that? Um, okay, I think I'll break up. I'll paint a bit of underneath the barrel of, of the gum, not the barrel. The uh, yeah, it is. Oh, well, the bit where you put the bullets in anyway on a traditional revolver. <laughs> Bob Europe or 
Right, so I'm sat there and we break the ice by uh, making comments about the um, seeing they needed my passport or, or a birth certificate or something to, to show I can work in this country and I took my passport. So we broke the ice by making jokes about passport photos and and the like. Um, and that was, you know, nice because it, uh, well, I say it's a nice breaker. So my dog's hankering to get out. I might have to stop the video in a moment so I could uh, let her out. She probably wants to go back in the house. It's too cold for you, Millie. Is that what it is? It is cold out here. The heating's only just starting to kick in and take the edge off. But what I learned though from the interview was and I'll let you into my little secret here. <laughs> what really got me the interview in the first place was the fact that I'd done a, a, um, a video CV. So I put my CV on video and put it out there and sent the Games Workshop a link to my uh, video CV which is on my personal YouTube channel not much on there to see um, and when I got there he said um, do you know I feel like I know you already and he said I've never come across uh, like a video CV before I know I'm not the first one to do them but I'm one of the first to kind of use it as a tool to get a job I think well one of the early ones Early pioneer, how's that? That sounds good. I like that. Um, but it seems to work. Because it gets people's attention. You know, and like I said in the video and on my application, it'll give you a chance to see what I'm like, what I sound like, what I look like ahead of time. And after they've seen it, and. I mentioned on the video I have MS, so really there's no need for any sort of surprise at that. It sounded like he, he knew that I have MS, because I offered him the chance to kind of talk about it at one point, like by saying, so is there anything you might have concerns about regarding my application, that, you know, as you've seen in my video. To which he replied, no, it's not really appropriate to talk about that sort of thing here. And we'll, um, he said, I've got no, you know, no concerns regarding your ability to do the job. So I'm going silent at one of the more finicky parts. Right, so I think a, a certain part of aspect of the job would revolve around painting miniatures and showing others how to paint. It was cool. <laughs> I think it's cool. Just realise someone's arm guards I've done in a different colour. Uh, I'm not sure whether I want to go back and fix that or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, it's just my phone buzzing. This is what happened the last time I was doing an on the bench, which never got aired because I couldn't finish it because I was, I was a bit like caught off guard. That's when my interview offer came through. There's certain parts on the top of his neck which I'm, I just look at and think, oh, I don't know for now. I'll come back to that. That's what I'm thinking. I'll come back to it. Then again, they kind of scavenge what they can, don't they? So, you know, it's not like they're going to be sort of all uniform, is it? Um, things may differ here and there. Sounds like I'd have a ton of reading to do if I got this job because you know I'd need to get myself up to speed with everything more or less. Warhammer related. I'm gonna know the product. And I said to them, my age of Sigma, you know, I don't really have any sort of knowledge on that yet. the yet in there, you know. But overall I think it went quite well. Um, I'll tell you now, uh, anyone that may be thinking of applying or going for an interview with Games Workshop, it's uh, some of the questions are scenario based, so it's like what would you do if kind of things. You know, you got this happening, this happening, and this happening in the store. What, what, uh, how are you going to prioritize your actions? Kind of thing. Oh, I've got to do his shoulder pad. Yeah. yeah, so it's that kind of thing. It's common sense, you know. But, uh, I was a bit surprised. They didn't ask me about the history of Games Workshop. What do you know about the company, you know? Which is a shame, because I could have told him that. Here's what I know. Brief. Run down. And, um... Games Workshop, right, was created in 1975 by three school friends. Steve Jackson, Ian Livingstone, and John Peake. All right. And um, I mean, who knows their reasonings for starting up a business like this? Just wanting to do it, I guess. John Peak. Uh, look, I'll say right now, <coughs> Games Workshop was hugely different in its beginning days. All right, hugely different. It sold. Um, they were in the business of like classical wooden board game type things, you know, like chess and backgammon and Chinese checkers, that that kind of thing. And they were handmade by John Peake. And I don't know because obviously, you know, I wasn't there. But by all accounts, they were very high quality, brilliantly, work, lovely workmanship, and you know real high quality goods. Now Ian Livingstone was going around to shops and retailers in person trying to get them to buy these games products that he was uh, that John was making whilst uh, Steve Jackson was kind of dealing with all the business end like the managerial stuff 
I, I don't know what goes on in a company such as that. Um, you know, at that level of its evolution. But that was what was happening. His shoulder pad. Um, and they were having limited success. They weren't, you know, really making enough money to support themselves. In fact, the majority of the income they earned was from Steve Jackson's uh, other job, which he was an illustrator for, um, well, let me see now, was it Puzzles and Games magazine? You know, back at, in the 70s, that's what he was uh, doing. So he's, he's a good illustrator, an artist, so that's, that's where they got their main income to, you know, keep them afloat, so to speak. They come up with the idea of putting together a magazine to try and get word out there about the games, you know, to try and boost their, their market. So, no, it wasn't White Dwarf, it was Owl and Weasel. More like a pamphlet, really, what you look at, really, or a newsletter, but uh, they called it a magazine. But it's called Owl and Weasel. And um, I don't know how. They're very good networkers, apparently. So, um, But what they did, they acquired the distribution list of a defunct magazine called Albion. And um, I forget the name of the... Uh, owner of that, or the guy that created that, I, I can't remember now. Don somebody, Dan somebody, I can't remember now. I think it began with a D. Right, but they got this distribution list. So they're putting out Owl and Weasel. Uh, now, bear in mind, like I said, it, it looked more like a, a pamphlet or a newsletter. It looked like what you would class as junk mail today. Alright? So... The fact that you know anybody read read it really I mean, it's a miracle, but the Owl and Weasel was read by <coughs> this one of the people on this distribution list was um, well, I can't remember his name, so apologies, but he was one of the developers and designers of uh, TSR. Now I'm sure you know TSR. Because they made Dungeons and Dragons. And he was really impressed by um, uh, Games Workshop. By the way, Games Workshop wasn't the original title that they went with. Well, that they were going to go with, I should say. It, it was the one they went with, but uh, you know they had other names like Garage Games and Galactic Gaming and stuff like that. But they went with Games Workshop. I'm glad they did because I think Games Workshop fits better. So where were we? Oh yeah, this guy from TSR. He's really impressed with Owl and Weasel. Uh, anyway, he sends them a free copy of Dungeons and Dragons. Now back in the day, Dungeons and oops, excuse me, Dungeons and Dragons was a real I don't know, indie kind of unheard of weird game. Nobody knew anything about it. It was not the king of RPGs like you have today. Uh, it, it was really just a strange experimental <laughs> um, type of game. Um, but anyway. He sent them a free copy of Dungeons and Dragons, which Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone, I don't know about John, but the other two definitely, they read through it and it blew them away. It blew their minds. They were they were instantly snagged onto this, yeah, we're in, I want some of this action. They were there. Um, so what they thought they would do is they thought they could sell this game over in England because it's from, it's from the US so they thought they could import the game so what they did 
was they bought up as many copies as they could afford and to sell and that grand total was six copies that's all, just six that's all they could afford but they sold more or less instantly because they were good at marketing through the Owl and Weasel and it really helped matters and, and they, they just, they sold, they sold all the copies so they bought more which sold as gain, again as well as the first lot which enabled them to buy yet more and that so like you see where I'm going with this they got to the stage where they were doing it a lot <laughs> and they started to import other games as well like RuneQuest and Traveller and Call of Cthulhu and that, that kind of thing Call of Cthulhu, I've never played that so forgive me if I butcher in that pronunciation there um, so yeah so these kind of role playing games what was termed as progressive games back in the day and John Peak he left Games Workshop because he, he, he didn't really want to go down that route he wanted to stick to the traditional games and so he left so now it's just Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone right and they live in a, they live in a flat together they share a flat and their landlord is evicting them because the the, the we'll call it a magazine for want of a better word but the yeah, the magazine Owl and Weasel it has their address at the bottom and you, they had people turning up expecting to see a shop to go in and this caused complaints and um, of course the yeah, landlord evicted them so they ended up living in uh, Ian Livingstone's girlfriend's flat for a while but only a short time and then they they um, they had use of I don't know if they rented, but they had use of a back room from an estate agent that they could use as an office. Um, and I think they were living out of the back of a car or a van at the time. It was really uh, hard times. And it was so bad, they, they had to join a local squash club just to get a shower. That's how bad things were. So, bear that in mind. They're living at the back of a car. And yet... The company is making money. It's really making money. Um, but for reasons I don't know, the estate agents, they wanted them to vacate the room at the back of their office. Maybe they needed it, but I don't know. Whatever. So Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone were like, yeah, fine, we'll do that. If you can get us a cheap shop or somewhere we can rent to, to work from. So they did, and on the 1st of April, the very first Games Workshop store opened in 1978. Yeah, 1st of April, you heard that right, but it wasn't an April Fool. Yeah, so that's the beginnings of Games Workshop, and in 1983, I think that takes them up to... Of course, uh, during that time, they decided to uh, get back into the. Well, they gave up Owl and Weasel, and then they went to to do um, proper magazine. What they termed as a proper magazine, more professional, and that was White Dwarf. Now, the reason it was called White Dwarf is because going back in the day. Uh, the, the distinction between science fiction and fantasy was not so obvious. Whereas today, you say fantasy, people think of like Conan and the Barbarian, Lord of the Rings, that kind of thing. And if you say f uh, science fiction, you think of stuff like Terminator and, well, you know, that kind of thing. Space. So, really, White Dwarf is a name which combines both. I mean, White Dwarf itself is like a, like a 
planetary phenomena, spatial phenomena. It's a star, isn't it, or something? I, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not an astronomer, <laughs> or a scientist. Come to that. So, and dwarf is obviously dwarf. White dwarf. It's a good name. Kind of cool. And that's why it became White Dwarf, and that's uh, been it, the name of it ever since. And that's my brief history on Games Workshop. Now, I'll credit some of this to one video that uh, I watched on YouTube. Uh, it was by Vince Venturella on his um, history of war games. Uh, you'll find it somewhere, I'm sure. Um, um, so a lot of that information comes from Vince and his research. So thank you, Vince. I was hoping that they'd ask me so I could kind of show off my super knowledge. I'd pitch it better than that, obviously. I've got, I'm actually working today with a bit of a headache, got to be honest. But, uh, yeah. So there you go. History Games Workshop. It's going to be about three, three days and evenings a week, I would imagine. It's about 20 hours, all told. But, um... Late finishings. I mean, weekends probably a must. Saturday and Sunday, shop will be open and until uh, you know nine or ten at night. So yeah. Bound to have missed a few. Bound to have. Still. This isn't bad. What we've got going in here. Not bad at all. Belt. I'll try not to miss anything, but uh, inevitably I will. So yeah, that's you know, been a bit of a conversation to have there, wasn't it? Passed a bit of time. I'm 28 minutes now, or thereabouts, 29. I think my dog's finally realised that the heater is kicking up quite a bit of heat now. Yep, she's sleeping by the heater now. 
very cute though. Got uh, someone coming around on next Thursday. Which doesn't really matter because, you know, by the time you see this it'll be different anyway. Um, to service our boiler. So maybe tomorrow at the time you're seeing this. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Because our boiler needs servicing. Like they do. Let's try and get this. Seems to be working alright though, which is good. Last thing you want is your boiler packing up in the winter, especially in England. That is not what you want to happen. Um, right. He's done, he's done. I'm getting there, I think. A sip of coffee. Probably stone cold, as they say. By now, but you know, whatever. His belt and handles for the grenade. Right, I think he's done. Just gonna put a little bit of gold here, side of his belt. I think he's done. Yeah, I think so. They'll be a lot better once their skin is done, I know that. Do his. Uh, I'll do the top bit gold, and I'll do the bottom bit. Well, I do the other one, red or yeah, red. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got a couple of places to clean up um, with red, and that's fine. Do some 
the grenade things grey as opposed to silver or gold. Yeah. I think that's, I think we're done there. I think we're done with the gold, which is good. Oh, just having my coffee. Wow. <coughs> Yeah, I'm going to clean up a couple of places with my fist on red. Put that in here. I did a bit much uh, Balfazar gold, but not to worry. <coughs> Don't need an awful lot. Be truthful. That's probably too much. Oh well. Couple of drops. Retard. Do them red. I think they look better red. I just do. Be nice to get the shade done and the skin done. Look at things like straps then. I've got to get my death guard finished as well. I might finish them up after I've done um, my necromunda. Yeah, the headpiece on the other guy I gotta do. Yes, so there is that as well. And when this is dry I've gotta do some silver on the edges. Oh I might be able to um, do a couple gun houses. The revolver type guns, I might be able to do them. Some part of them red after all. Thank you. 
So, there's one gun, there's two guns, that's three guns. There's four guns that might need the casing working on. Well, there might need about it. So, let's do this. Top here. Do you know I love filming these videos? Because I know that by the time I filmed my video, I'm gonna have another stage done on my necromunda, and that's awesome. Might even get a chance to get a stage in before the next video. I mean, so far I haven't been able to do any in-between work, but it's a very, very, very small amount. But I might get that chance today. It might work out. I wish my headache would go away. Going to paint the part that he's holding though, kind of like the hand grip underneath. That's going to be black. That is going to be black. Ah, oh dear, dear, dear. Start this and came a bigger, bigger thing than I thought. That's okay. That's one. All the under, the bottom bit is going to be black. I've decided slightly different on this gun, but not much. The difference is where he's holding the gun, where he's got his hand. There are certain areas where it's like you're never going to see on the other side. So you don't need to go all the way down. You're just never going to see them no matter what angle you tip it at. So I've 
come to the stage of thinking, well, I'm not going to try and paint that because I'll only mess this stuff up that you can see. So, no, not doing it. There's another gun. There's like a pistol-y type gun here. I'm going to do that. I just need to see what time it is. Oh, it's 10 to 3. 10 to 3 in the afternoon. See, if I had this job in Games Workshop, I'd still have a few hours to go on a normal day. And on a long day, I'd have a lot of hours to go. <laughs> About 6 or 7 hours to go. That's alright. Oh my heart. Trapped in Games Workshop. Oh, the shame of it. Right. right. So that leaves me with one gun to do the housing on. quite liking how they're starting to look though, these guys, it's uh, I know there's an awful long way to go yet, but you know, I'm quite liking it I filmed the super moon the other day. You've probably seen the video. Um, if I, you know, if I remember, I'll post a link to it. But uh, we'll do something. But anyway, um, that was really good. The footage came out really well. I'm I'm super pleased with it. I'm surprised at how fast the moon actually moves in the sky. You don't notice it, but you got your camera on a tripod. You notice it going out of shot. It, you know, you're just moving. It's like moves quicker than I would have expected. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Whilst I got the colour out, I'll just look for any more small areas that could be touched up. That's something I like to do. Yeah, which might seem insignificant. Just just while you've got the colour, you might as well. It ain't gonna cost you anything. And you know, you've got the colour out. 
them there and ready to go. So why not? There's a water stone just down from Games Workshop in Exeter. Which it's a really nice water stones as well. It's got like a couple of floors. It's, uh, it's got a nice cafe in there. I mean, a lot of them do have, but uh, you know, customer toilets. It's it's all there. It's all good. Uh, Just having a look around. Go back to the key, go back to this one. Yeah, that's better. Like I say, while you've got the colour out, you might as well. You've got nothing to lose. And it will only add to the overall awesomeness. So if I don't get this Games Workshop job, will I apply for them again? Yeah, of course I will. There will be other jobs to apply for. And even if I do get this job, I'll still apply for other jobs within Games Workshop. Yeah, damn right. You're damn right. Won't get to CEO if I don't, will I, eh? Ha ha! I did surprise. I did surprise the manager though. <laughs> I think he had a question for me. I won't say what the question is in case it's a... <laughs> You know, one they use, and they don't want the secrets given away or whatever. But, uh, oh, I'll tell you. Basically said, here's a strange one for you. I'd like to ask you. Give me a scenario, like an imaginary thing. Imagine you're in charge at the top of Games Workshop. You're like the CEO or something. He said, I want you to take your time to think about this. Is there any changes or anything you'd have the company do differently? He says, no, you know, you can take some time to think about the answer. And I immediately said, not a problem. I, I don't need to think about that at all. I know exactly what I would change. I won't tell you what I said, but uh, I knew exactly what I would change and, and um, implement and it wasn't anything uh, negative either. It was, uh, I think it was a really cool idea because the recruitment guy wrote it down. I could be reading stuff into that. I, I don't know. Uh, 
let's say if I do get this job, it's uh, it's not going to stop me doing videos, but I might need to schedule even more than I do now. So yeah, I'll work around it. I'll I'll work around it. I'll have to. I would have to pick another day to record P and Q though. Might have to go back to well. Might well to start with. I might have to go back to Friday or 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 have a couple or have a week off, which I have never done before, and pick a day in the week to to record it. Because, um, you know, otherwise I'm just not going to be able to get it done. Well, I suppose I could record it on the day, but it won't go out in the, at the beginning. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll cross these bridges when I get to them, you know. Might even have to change. But that's okay. Absolutely fine. Coming around. Carefully does it. Don't want to get too much on there. Yeah, see how that looks. That's good. Hold it up. I think I th I think they were impressed with me. I'd like to think they were impressed with me in the interview. Um, I mean, even if they if I don't get this job, which wouldn't surprise me because it's the, like I said, it was the first interview in fifteen years at least. You can't expect to just have an interview or you know and they go in and get it. it. Doesn't work that way. That's not the way of the world. And being that much older and hopefully a little bit wiser. You know, I, I, I know that now. If I was younger, I probably wouldn't. I'd be a bit upset by it. Like I say, it isn't going to stop me, no matter what. I, I just love being around the hobby. I love it. Just these little tidy ups here and there, all out to the overall aesthetic quality of the level you're of the, the stage you're doing, and it really does make a difference. Because what you got to remember is, um, you know, when you go to put a wash on, that might accentuate any any small errors you did on the previous stage. It might do. I'm not necessarily talking about this paint job here, but uh, 
just saying in general, like, you know. My wife's out to lunch with her friends tonight. The, um, the fantabulous beasties. I think they're planning on some uh, trip away. I must get my act together, um, really, and, um, what was I going to say, uh, yeah, I'm organized, sorry, I've got distracted, I must get my act together and organize some of their, they got a load of video clips, um, that I want to sort out for them. things, and I never got to say this to um, any of the people in the interview, I was going to say one of the great things about painting is I can immerse myself into it. But I want to learn about lots of stuff, you know, behind the scenes stuff. If I get this job, I want to learn all the stuff that you don't normally know is going on behind the scenes. In a store like that. I mean, I, I know all the usual stuff, like the stock ordering control and whatever else. Done that many times in jobs quite well used to that. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, quite well used to that. Oh wow, I've gone over the hour. Do you know? I was going to move on to another thing, but um, I think I've taken up enough of your precious time and these guys you know they're looking good I think I think they're looking great move that to one side wash my brush properly later but yeah they're looking all right you know the stuff I mean you've got to use your imagination a little bit because they haven't got their skin tones done yet all the colors but yeah they're looking all right a lot further on than say my house Escher. So I'll just put a yellow on for now. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm gonna end it here. Yeah. So thank you once again for joining me on this episode of On the Bench. It's been a real blast. Oh, I'm so chuffed with what I've got done there. That's good. I'm hoping I won't need to see too much more Mephisto on red. Uh, any other reds that I'll be doing now hopefully will be different shades, lighter ones and stuff. I'm just doing something different. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been brilliant. Hope you got stuff done as well. And let me know, as always, in the comments below what you've been working on or any other thoughts you may have about anything. Um, something coming up sometime in the future, either as a tutorial or as an on-the-bench. It's my Sly Marbo. So watch out for that one in the near future, hopefully. And, um, yeah, see you on the next video. Remember, all brushes lead to war. Bye for now.